So we've got a little uh, mock-up window here. This is an old window that came out of, an out of a uh, 1920s house. And uh, we're gonna use this for a little practice today to show you how to get a stuck sash moving again, how to deal with that. Now, this is a double hung window. Uh, you can see it's got a little, uh, it's got a sash lock here. And if I try and open the window, either side, top sash doesn't move, bottom sash doesn't move. They are pretty well painted shut. You've got your interior stops on here, and I'm gonna show you how to use a few of the tools that we do to get these sash moving again. So one option you have is you could use a razor knife, right? You come through here and score this line, which is gonna be on the interior of your sash. You can score this line here a few times, try and get it. If this is really cocked up, this will help, but it's certainly not gonna solve the problem in its entirety. You're gonna score this line here too as well, right? On this side of the stop. You can see up here on my top sash, I could do the same thing. I've got it, like there is so much paint and caulk on here. Like this razor knife isn't really even doing much to it. Probably need a sharper razor knife too anyway. So that's one option that a lot of people will do. I prefer to use a sash saw, which is this tool right here. This is uh, something we have in our store, the craftsmanstore.com. And one of the reasons I like it, there was another tool called a window zipper that's pretty weak. This one has a much thicker grade metal and very spiky and pointy. And if it does bend, break, or wear out, you can always get a replacement blade for it. So keep your you know, nice hardwood handle and uh, just replace the blade as you need. How this works, this is designed to go cut into those areas where there's a lot of caulk and a lot of paint. So I'm gonna start down here in the bottom sash and then we'll work our way up to the top sash and we'll see how this will work to get everything freed up. So you can see I'm going to work into this area to cut free the paint and caulk that is in there and you slide it along on the face of your sash. See, it's not scarring my sash. I don't have any chance once it gets in there. And you can see it fits in here very well and then you can use it in a sawing action or just pull to get that freed up. I'm gonna do both sides. To cut that paint line. And then you may or may not, it may or may not be able to move yet because you still may have paint on the outside. So yeah, still not going anywhere, but I've cut the inside free at least. Next step for me is I'm gonna pry off at least one of my stops, but two can make it faster. I'm gonna use a five and one to get started so I don't damage the stop. And then I'll use a pry bar. There's that. And then I find that I'm much faster with a molding pry bar after I get it started to pry everything off. One more nail down here, it's holding on to. So there, I've got that one side off. I'm gonna pop those nails out too that are still left in the jam because the bottom sash is gonna come out this way. If I leave my nails in there, then it's gonna bump up against these nails that are remaining. There we go. They're pretty stubborn. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. goes. And these stops are usually only held on by four or five different nails throughout the body of it. There you go. That one's off. A little bit closer again. You're going to have to pull the nails out because they are blocking. See, my sash can't slide out because the nail is blocking. Okay. Now, let's see. My sash, nope, it still won't move. Simple solution for that is your five and one again. Right here at the meeting rail, this is where you're going to have your problem because this is probably painted shut. And that, as with most windows, is the problem. Once I get that broken, there's a big paint line on the outside. 
but I don't have to worry about it because once I pull that meeting rail, pry that meeting rail apart, all that paint line just falls apart and I can pull my sash out. So you can see the heavy paint line that's on here. It was able to break apart because I just put that five in one in here to break the seal and then you can tilt this back and out. Normally you'd have a stool on the inside, so you tilt it this way and then you have to lift up about an inch, three quarters of an inch to be able to pull it right out. But since the ropes are not attached to any weights anymore, they're all beat up, that's how you can get your bottom sash out. Top sash, very much the same thing. I'm not gonna go into it on this one, but it's the same basic principle. You take your sash saw, you're gonna cut along here, cut along here, all around there this parting bead is. And the same thing, you have to pull the parting beads out. I have another video that'll show you how to do like a full window removal and full window installation on YouTube. But as for using the sash saw to cut it out, I will cut this side so you can see how it is since there's so much caulk and paint, how effective this is compared to a razor knife. So we'll do one side, I'll do a couple passes with a razor knife and show you what you're looking at. I'm cutting into there, but it's also wandering a little bit. It's doing okay, right? Get the sash saw in there, and you can see how much more caulk is coming out. There is a lot in there, and then see what the, what's great about it is it gets back into there. That's where the paint is causing a lot of the problem. So once you get that sash saw in there, my razor knife won't be able to go that far, that deeply into it. You do that on all sides, and you'll get this thing moving a lot smoother. So um, hope you enjoyed our little in-shop tutorial on how to get a stuck sash moving again. That's it. For more help on old houses and old windows, be sure to subscribe and check out these videos. Till next time.